Hello and welcome to Tim's BMW Repairs and Information. Well, since I put the last video out, the world has completely changed. COVID-19 has changed the way the world acts. And in the UK at the moment, 26th of March today, uh, we're in lockdown. So I can't go to work. I've got a lot of time on my hands. Now, it may seem absolutely trivial to talk about cars and repairing cars in a world crisis. But I found the hardest thing to deal with is actually the fear about the virus. And I'm going to find things to do on the car, which I should have done years ago. And uh, hopefully that will take my mind off of things. And hopefully if you're watching the video and then do the repair yourself, you'll find that sort of takes your mind off of it for a little while at least. So my aim is to find us jobs which don't require us going to the store to get parts um, things we can do with just the sort of general junk you have around, oh, just piles of junk here. And uh, the first thing we're going to have a go at is the boot lid wiring on the 8 Series. Um, it has a wiring that goes uh, up the hinge and as the trunk or boot opens and closes, it eventually fatigues the wires and then the light bulbs don't work anymore on the back. And I've done a temporary repair on mine. I did the actual permanent repair about oh, about eight years ago. And a couple of years ago, it stopped working again. And I did a quick emergency repair on it. And now it's got to the point I really need to do it. So that's a great job to do. Uh, it takes the minimum of tools and it's very fiddly and it takes your mind off of things. And the other thing we can do on both the cars is we can sort out the alloys. I do have a habit of curbing them now and again and I'll show you a way of fixing them so they look great again and so they don't corrode and the only things we use to repair it is a 3M headlight restoring kit yeah, I know it sounds ridiculous but it works and a whetstone and you can get whetstones and uh, the other stuff via mail order and so we don't have to go out into the world and should just take a couple of di days to arrive <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's my plan. I'm going to think of a number of jobs that we can do on the car that just takes our mind off of things for a while. And I hope you enjoy the series and I'll see you later. Right, let's have a look at where the problem is. The problem's right here on the hinge. Different to see with this sunlight, uh, but um, here's the wiring for the boot hinge. See, it goes round, goes underneath these clips and into the lid. So they wind themselves down here and actually into the uh, aperture there. Now where they break is, uh, is where they bend. So we can see when we shut the lid, yeah, most of the bending is going on around here. Um, and it's usually these positions that start to fail first. Right, let's try and cut those that sheath off. I've had a practice. The scalpel seems to be sharp enough. It's sharpened it up with a wet stone. So, get off my car. Come on. Blimmin' cats. Right, here we go. A little bit at a time, I think, rather than trying to slice it. Probably a bit safer. I'm going to chop through all the wires. There we go, we're off again. This has still got obviously a portion of the original outer sheath on it. That's eight years ago, I can't remember what I did on this side. There we go, yeah, that's got the original sheath. I think I'll get rid of that completely this time. Up to about this point here. That's a lovely day though. say quite absorbing sort of job this is take your time get through the sheath of course on yours you'll probably have this original sheath on it um, which I chopped up it's sort of woven sheath that was so off we go then Thank you. 
There we go, that's off. Right, let's have a look at the wires. <coughs> right, so he's lost his insulation, but hasn't broken. That's one of the repairs, he's fine. That's a repair, that's fine. Breaking the insulation, that'll fail eventually, but it's okay at the moment. He's fine. There's the brown, the thicker one, and lost a bit of insulation, but hasn't failed. No, this, this loom's fine. I think what I'll do is I'll cut back a bit further and check further down just to make sure there's no problem in there. And I'll redo this all when I finish the repair. It's just check there's nothing wrong up here. So it's a darn sight easier to cut the original sheath, that's for sure, than it is to cut self-amalgamating tape. There we go. That's a lot neater. Right, now that's fine down there. There's no problems in there. So it's just at the top end. Probably worth checking in here as well. That looks fine. So that looms all right, apart from the loss of insulation. So I don't think there's much to do that. We could deal with the insulation. Um, we can cut it and put heat shrink on it. That'd be good. No, that's fine. Right, on to the other side, and this has got that backward clip on it. So I'll have to get that off first. without snapping it, which is my worry. Here we go. Almost there, come on. Get the wire out first, maybe. There we go, it's a loom out, and then I turn it round for next time. Because that's just a bit of a nuisance, that was, right? There's the cable. Bit of the original stuff one end, bit of the original stuff at the other. That's all going to go this time. Start from the top this time. Right. Yeah, it might be worth trying some of that spiral wrap stuff instead of this. Although this works really well, of course it's a bit awkward to get back off again. Oh, there's a broken wire to start with. There's one there. That's flopping about doing nothing. I don't know what that one's for. Boot light, I should think. Yeah, they're all sort of flopping about, aren't they? Yeah, this side's very badly affected. It might even be worth disconnecting the battery because these are quite likely to short together at any time. Not that the lights are on, so we'll probably be all right. And you can see this side has had quite a few repairs. Why this side was worse than the other, I can't tell you really. But it certainly is a lot worse. And you can see here that I've had to repair it quite far down. That's the big brown one. You can see that's been repaired. Oh, come off, <laughs> come apart again. So that's another of the earths fallen off. That's probably the cause of half the bulb failures, I should think. Yeah, that loss of ground is the reason I had to do the emergency repair. I think I'll show that to you next while I get all the tools out to do this. So that ground was the, the major problem. And I should think, oh, well, we've got a couple of wires off there. And that'll be the boot, the trunk lid light.
I'm not expecting any failures down this end. But for, for the sake of the video, I'll cut it all the way back so we can start afresh. It's not too onerous getting rid of the uh, amalgamated, self-amalgamating tape. Not too bad. Scalpel, a bit fiddly. There we go, we've got to the end of that. Have a quick look in there. Pull that back so there's no fractures at all there. Obviously decided to join them much further down. But no, that's fine there. And it all happens at this hinge here. This this is where it bends. Oh, we see we've got quite a few problems there. Quite a few. Yeah, not pretty. Right. Right. I'll show you where the emergency repairs made. Oh, got that out at all. Yeah, there we go. There we go. And that's, when you put these back in again, by the way, put the screws in first. Very difficult to do it otherwise. Right, I'll try and bend it so you can see it. There we go, uh, down a bit. So that's my ground wire, and what it does, it goes between the two license plates, like number plate lights, exactly the same on both sides. And what you do is you pull this out. There you go. That's the sort of wire which runs between the two lights. That's the light, by the way, with an LED in it, and uh, and a festoon. They always go wrong. Too hot in there. Yeah, what you do is you just hook the wire round to the aperture for the brown wire, which is the ground for the. Sorry, I can hand out the way. That. This is the brown for the right-hand side of the car, which is the ground for all this side. And what's happened is we obviously lost the ground from the other side. So I just moved the camera over there to get that one out as well. That's it, both out, both, both the screws out. And then you can see the other wire does exactly the same on the other side. So that just joined the grounds from the right hand side to the left hand side. And now I've got all my lights working again, well, apart from the trunk light, which is obviously a separate wire. So pull that out. There we go. So, simple as that, just a wire running from one side to the other. Right, hopefully we won't need that. And while I've got the number plate lights out, I'll sort out the LEDs on them. Uh, because, as I said before, this is a simple plan. What you do is you get a normal festoon bulb and solder an LED bulb to it. And uh, I'll, try, I'll hike it out, it's got to be fixed anyway. There we go. Yeah, an LED bulb soldered to a festoon bulb. And of course having the festoon in there means that you don't get any uh, license plate failure warnings on the mid. And... Uh, allows you to solder a LED festoon to it uh, to get the LEDs to work. Well the problem is is they both get very hot and eventually all the LEDs fail and what this one was doing is just flickering. My neighbour came up to me about a week ago and said oh, I've just noticed that uh, when you drove out your number plate lights were flickering. Yep yeah, that's why. So for expediency's sake I'm going to remove the LEDs for now and uh, just put the festoon back in. Have a good close look at all these wires. See, I'm focusing on that. So you've got this one. That's starting to fail. The insulation's cracked off of it. The brown one has failed, which is here. That's the original, well, not my, it's the, the, my repair to it. Goes there. 
bit of wire inserted and it's fallen off the other end so it's fatigued the wires the the solder still there Look, the solder still looks fine on it uh, but it snapped off um, that's because of the just the bending at that uh, axis point this one's repaired and looks fine he looks fine all the way up white brown yeah he's all right nothing wrong with that gray one losing insulation uh, that one losing insulation and uh, this stripey fella here well he's just come off altogether I bet that's the trunk light which makes sense that'd be the trunk light that's where we lost the ground so yeah we need to repair those probably not focusing in there we go good look at the wiring and see what happens to it of course once the insulation comes off uh, that's a bend point obviously it's harder to bend the insulation than it is the copper inside um, so yeah once the insulation's come off it will start to fail especially the brown one because that's very inflexible altogether which is why I cut it a lot further down because that doesn't want to bend at all I mean that that's not interested it's, a, it's like a um, coat hanger that is yeah so okay so we've got quite a bit of repairing to do but it's not onerous and it'll take our mind off of things right i find all my equipment right here we go then here's all the equipment i've got i've got a soldering iron set to about 400 degrees that should do it uh pair of side cutters two lots of solder uh heat shrink and some wire that's all we need i won't be using the fat solder for soldering but i'll show you what i'll use it for in a minute right need to get rid of that lump on there bit of fresh solder yeah, this iron's not that great yeah not the best iron there you go what do you expect for 40 quid eh Right, oh, yeah, that's even tidied up. What we'll do is we'll put a short bit of wire on that and I'll get rid of that, um, the one we made, I made earlier on. So about that long, I should think, will do nicely. There we go. Do. Of course, don't forget to put the heat shrink on there before we do the rest of it. There we go. That's, that'll do fine. And of course, this is the point you need three hands to do anything. So I need to tin the wire. And flux would be so much better here, but although I've got flux at work, I haven't got any at home. And I won't be at work for a while. Let's try that again. Some tin on there. There we go, that'll do nicely. And we'll just do a lay joint on there, well, as best as we can in these situations. Lay joint rather than a butt joint, I think, probably be best. Yeah, it's been very windy today as well, that probably not helping the iron much. Uh, it's on, but not pretty. Not enough tin on the wire, that's the problem. Try some fat solder on it.
still not good enough, just hasn't got enough solder on it. And got bits of solder dropping into the car. It's got a bit of solder on it. Yeah, it's going to end up with just a big lump, isn't it? I'm quite sure why the iron isn't. The iron's just crap, basically, I think. Yeah, it's now cooled down again because of the wind. Let's see what the temperature is. Well, that reckons it is up at 100, uh, 400. I don't believe it. It just isn't working well. I mean, that joint there, so I might have to cut that back and start again, I think. Got too much of a solder blob on it. Problem is, is I need some flux here, and these wires are so fragile, and brittle, very difficult to work with. Of course, being old wire, it, it hates to take any solder. I'll get some on the iron, some heat into it. Yeah, I just won't take the solder, that's the problem. It's just not interested. Try some thinner solder. No, we need some flux, so I have to go and have a look, see if I've got any. Of course, not acid flux, you need proper electrical flux. Chemtronics tacky flux is the best stuff for this. As I say, I've got some at work, but I won't be there for a while. Oh, that seems to have taken the solder now anyway. There we go, that's perfectly acceptable. A bit of other bit of wire isn't though, it doesn't look happy at all. Try again with a little solder, can't see a thing can you? There we go, that's a bit better. Right, take our time on this, allow it to heat up. There we go, come on. That's it, they've sort of melded together now. That's better. That's a decent joint, thank goodness for that. Right, yeah, so we'll make sure we've got the right length. And we'll cut the brown around about here. And we'll do the same to a joint there. And obviously before we've actually put it on, we'll uh, put some heat shrink on it. So let's double check the distance. Yeah, that's probably too, sh too long, I should think. So that needs to go down there. And we end up just about there. <coughs> so we'll strip this the same as we did. Normally I just pull on the side cutters, but this wire is so brittle, it's just, I think it would just fall apart if I tried to pull it too hard. Just take my time and get a decent pull on that without actually pulling the whole thing apart. Is that another joint in there? It looks like that's had another joint already. Right, let's try again, get a decent tin on it. Come on, you can do it. That's it, that looks fine now. Good, that's properly tinned. A couple of bits of heat shrink, I'll cut those out. There it is. What we got? Bit big, but yes, beggars can't be choosers. 
So we can put it anywhere we like if it's happier there. I think what I do is I'll shrink the first one into place up there. Uh, I've got a heat gun, but I think in these sort of confined spaces, be daft to just put too much heat everywhere. I use the side of the iron, smokes a bit. Let's do one part of it first, stops it moving around. There you go, so it's got a little cut out in it and now we can uh, shrink the rest of it into place. Yeah, that'll do, that's about the right diameter. I think that's 3.2 millimeter black heat shrink. So don't use the bit which you're actually soldering on because it'll see coat it and then your soldering iron won't actually work properly. There we go. Right now I need to strip. Oh we stripped already haven't we? That's good. There we go. Let's do the next one. So I'm not doing any edits on this video uh, because we don't have time really. I'd rather be doing jobs than sitting in front of the computer editing. There we go, that's nicely tinned. And then we get to this point where um, you end up needing at least four hands. So what we'll do is we'll use the fat solder to hold things in position. So what I'll do is I'll get this further up there by putting a bit of solder around there like that. That keeps that in that position. And then I'll do the same with this one. Let's get it close to where it should be. Okay, so now we've got the solder holding this in the right sort of position. Got the heat shrink in place, ready to go. And we just do a lay joint where they're just laid side by side. Do a butt joint, but there's no need. There we go. Let's hold it together. Give it a few seconds to cool down. Yeah, that's fine. So remove the bit of solder. And use the side of the iron to put a bit of waste in it to stop it moving and then you can go around the rest of it. Again don't use the tip of the iron uh, because that will stop the iron actually working properly. There we go, brief unexpected edit there because the camera fell off. There we go. That's nice, so uh, that will lay in there again nicely. Could have been a tiny bit shorter, but not much to it. But now that's the ground back on. And uh, that'll be fine. So we've got this one with all the broken insulation. The wire itself isn't broken. Same with that purple one. But what probably best to do is cut it and uh, resolder it, but put some heat shrink on it so we can cover up this area, have a long bit of heat shrink. So you can't put heat shrink in without cutting a wire. Yeah, probably about here. So cut it about there, pull the sleeves off both sides, tin both of them, long bit of heat shrink on, pull it up. And that, that should do the job, I should think. Righty, hey, let's give that a go then. Well, that... Might as well all come off, really. Because it'll be heat shrunk again. Now we'll probably have to do a butt joint here. Don't need too long a bit. There we go. Yeah, I have to do a butt joint here because otherwise uh, it's end up shorter. Right, so heat shrink over it. This whole bit will be insulated. It's quite an area to get tinned and of course with this wire being ancient it doesn't like to be tinned but we'll give it a go. Have to put a bit of solder on the iron to uh, start flowing onto the 
wire but as soon as you've got a bit of solder then put the solder onto the wire rather than the iron so do that again sorry for the shaky hands it's probably being old isn't it things shake after a while a bit of solder on the iron keep putting it on the iron because it moves the flux onto the wire there we go that's got him that's got a nice blob of solder on the end so what we do is just do the same trick use a bit of solder around there just hold it in place there we go something like that bend it into position see if I can get it into position before I start which I can And of course we've got to heat up both ends of the wire, so there we go. And of course he's bending, because as the copper heats up it, it expands, so start again. Yeah, these sort of jobs are just <coughs> fiddly and very time absorbing. There we go, that's a decent join there, that's nice. Bit of a bump on the side, but <coughs> that's fine. There we go, heat shrink over. Put a waist in it and go along the length. There we go. There he's happy in the. He's quite happy there. Right, next one we got red with yellow stripe. Now he's got a break here, break in the insulation. It's snapped off. So we use a long bit of heat shrink for that. Um, we we'll bear that wire, bear this one. So I chop it back a tiny bit. And. Uh, Heat shrink over, butt joint, because no, we don't need to put another bit of wire in there, that's fine. And then we've got that one there, do the same with that. Right, let's get on with it. Again, this wire is just so brittle here. Rather than just put the side cutters through and snip through, what I do is to sort of nip one side, so at least it's got a start. Just hope that the... <laughs> Well, it doesn't snap off somewhere in the hinge because that'd be a bit unfortunate, wouldn't it? Well, it's got almost enough wire there to solder, but I would have thought that's pretty manky bit of wire there. There we go. Right, long bit of heat shrink. There we go, I think that's all of them done. They're all healthy now. They all look fine. Right, for um, covering, as I said, I used self-amalgamating tape before, but I think this time I might give um, that spiral wrap a go, and I'll have to find it, see if I can find any on Farnell or RS, and they deliver. So yeah, that's fine. All the lights should work now. Shouldn't be a problem there.
that's another one done. That's what we got left. Got that white one that's sort of cracked all the way up. That's a replacement wire as well. Just goes to show it's not just the BMW wire that fails. There we go, not, there's no um, of the original sleeve there at all. So I used the self amalgamating tape right up there, I think. That'll do. Give it a good stretch. There we go, that'll do. Especially the end bit needs to be stretched. There we go. Right, that will increase the bend radius at that point. Stick him back in the clip. Stick him back in the other clip. And the rest I'll do with a uh, spiral wrap. That should uh, be quite neat. So anyway, that's got it safely clipped in there. So he's happy there. I could do all of it with uh, self amalgamating tape really, now I've got that far. Well, there's, there's probably only four inches left to go on that side. So I might as well do that with self amalgamating tape. While I'm at it, it just seems ridiculous otherwise. There we go, that's the other side done. Stick him back in his catch. There. That's not too bad of a job, is it, really? All done, all sorts of twigs flying in now with the wind coming up. That's it, that'll do. Let's check the lights. Right, well that's that job finished. Um, I was going to use spiral wrap, it would have been a lot easier, but I had the self amalgamating tape and I wanted to sort of bolster up the area where it went through the clip, which is where they all seem to break. But I thought, well, might as well do it all I suppose, at least that's that job finished. But I will try some spiral wrap. It was difficult to find the right size and I've got doubts whether it will stop it bending in the important places. But anyway, that job's done, all the lights work, um, no errors at all, so I'm very pleased with that. And I don't have the emergency wire in there either. Right, next thing to do will be alloy wheels. They're quite absorbing as well, just takes a while sort of bashing things with wet stones and uh, polishing them with a drill and stuff like that. So, well, thanks very much for watching and thank you very much for subscribing and commenting down below. I always try to answer the comments as best as I can and I'll see you next time.